Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I haven't done one like this in a while. It really needs updating. So we're going to go through every single epic in Raid Shadow Legends. And we're just going to give them a quick 30 minute, 30 minute? No, 30 second blast of how good they are, uh, if they're good at all. You can, if you pull shards over this weekend or any future weekend, come to hellhades.com. In the search for a champion on the homepage, you can just press anyone. Press whoever you like. Hi, Katoon. And you will find yourself at kind of like overview on the website as well. So if you just pull a shard and you want to know, you can quickly come here. It's got a star rating for every area of the game. It tells you what they're good at in faction wars. It tells you how to kind of assess whether you should book them or not. Is there a priority of skill that you should book and then stop using your books if books are a luxury to you? Uh, also, it goes through things like damage multipliers on skills. Any masteries which we think are kind of best in slot for this champion for different areas of the game. And then if there's a blessing which we particularly think is good for this champion, we'll put it there. Some gear recommendations. If I've done a guide, it's there as well. So loads of information on every champion page if you need it. Uh, just quickly as well, we've also added a couple of things onto hellhades.com. So we've got champion tier list if you want to see them all kind of ranked against each other. We've added a pack off a calculator which is um, multi-currency, just so you can kind of see if, it, if packs are relevant to you. You can input your info, see what you think. It's still down to whether you think it's good or not, though, honestly. We've also added a Clan v Clan calculator for when Clan v Clan is on, uh, if you want to uh, kind of like assess how many points you could burst if you want to destroy an enemy team. So there you go. Let's get into this here. I'm going to bookmark down below the different sections if you just want to jump to someone who you think is very good. but uh, I guess let me know if you agree or disagree with my picks. Uh, this is normally one of those videos where people have a lot of things to say. And I'm open, by the way, to feedback. If suddenly I feel like overwhelmingly someone says, no, you're wrong on that, then I do adjust. So uh, it's not like my way is the high, my way or the highway or whatever they say. Anyway, let's do it. All epics. Look out for my all legendaries, which is probably coming tomorrow because uh, they both badly need an update. It's been about, I think, about a year since I've done this. Okay, Horde in. Basically, hard hitting, but trash. Lordy Legendary is a free login champion. Has a bit of finite sort of synergy with his kit, but I wouldn't invest in a Lordly. Archmage, you get him from Doom Tower. First one you would get from normal Doom Tower. Really good champion, giving you speed, crit rate, crit damage. It's also got a stun, which is unusual for an epic, and cool passives. This guy is good. Pretty much university good around the game. Get hard, hits hard, but pretty trash. Like, I don't know where you're going to use this fella. Kind of bad. Arndolf, I mean, this guy, he does have AoE hits. He hits for an okay amount. Got a provoke, which might help you in Hydra, but honestly, I think he's pretty trash. Oathbound, really good faction war champion. Got lots of multi-hitting skills. Put him in a stun set. He's got control. His abilities do control anyway with freezes and lockouts. I think he's a really good wave-based control champion. Not really a hitter. Chancellor Yasmin, her AI is awful, which for me makes her fairly unusable. So don't really like this champion at all. Seneschal, very mid-tier, does have things like leech abilities and uh, heals and stuff. He's a reasonable support unit. Does have a provoke and a counterattack. So again... If you're looking to control a wave, he's okay. But generally, outside of Faction Wars, would use him. Alaric, hits hard, does nothing. Lady Quillen, actually kind of not bad. She is uh, a free champion on some promo code that's out there right now. She's pretty good early game. She gives you a turn meter boost and stuff. I think she falls off pretty hard when you get into mid game. So I wouldn't overinvest. So Armitage, no thanks, no good. Knight Errant smacks, but doesn't do anything else. So... Unless you're using him as like a sand devil hitter, wouldn't bother. Stag Knight, whoo, best epic we've seen so far. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe like out of these really two epics, I would say are like pretty, pretty high level. Stag Knight's right up there, plays right through to end game. Great in arena, great against Ice Golem. Uh, generally has got a kit that's just going to work for you. AoE decrease defense and an attack on a three turn. Decrease speed as well. Makes, the decreased speed is actually what makes him so top tier because he becomes a boss killer or helps you to kill a boss anyway. Fearmonger, trash. Discard, 
kind of okay. Got decreased attack A1 provokes uh, on quite a high percentage chance to land. Uh, and it gives you increased attack and defense. Doesn't hit like crazy hard or anything, but he's just a, a mid-tier decent champ. Old Colin here. Elfric. Uh, this guy's not actually that bad. Really weak decreased attack on his A1. Lets him down, but he's got an AoE and a turn to fill. Good support-based champion. Um, wouldn't really 60 this dude, though. Maybe a level 50, like a faction war type dude. Lady Annabelle. Queen of Bommel. Able to solo Bommel. That's probably her best spot. She does bring as well this kind of AoE decrease speed and leech, which could be quite good for Hydra. So generally, decent champion. The reason she can solo Bommel is his passive. Heals by 50% whenever an ally or enemy dies. When a bomb explodes and does a whole bunch of your health, she will heal 50% of her health. So the bombs aren't her biggest risk. Rowan, been buffed about three times, needs another four or five buffs before she's usable in the game. Only place she's ever used is an unkillable team as a poisoner. And I feel like there's better options out there, even in rares. Azure, kind of tanky and okay in faction was as a bit of a brute, but not that great. Warcaster usable in some unkillable teams for clan boss. That's probably his best spot. Not bad in faction wars as well. Asala, great epic. AoE, decrease attack and increase attack for your team. She's got a great revive with two brilliant buffs as well. And she's got speed in Doom Tower, which is kind of like okay. But yeah, really good support based champ. Worth a 60. On to High Elves then. Royal Guard, still king of the swingers. Uh, he's got an AoE. Enemy max HP skill. It's loads of damage. It's also bringing drop defense and decreased speed on a four hitter. Good for Finite. Good for Dark Fey. Good for Spider Killing. Uh, good for Hydra. Like, there's a whole bunch of areas where he's still top tier. Like, goes in above a lot of legendary champions. That's, what, that's where he goes. Tyrell, still very good. His AoE drop defense is on a four turn, which is kind of sucky now compared to a lot of champions which have come out since. But he does have a good decrease attack A1. Does have a turn to drop on his A3. Good champion. Skaramis, another one of the new ones. Good champion, actually. AoE provoke at 100%. It's very unusual for an epic. And he's got another AoE on the A2 um, with a stun on the A1. Very good champ. Dahlia, not really a big fan of this one. Does bring a provoke, which is okay for Hydra. And an AoE decrease attack. Outside of Hydra, not really sure where you would play her. Um, the Nassau, kind of old school, a little bit old hat now, needs a bit of a rework, I would say. Not bad as a sleeper for the Sand Devil, albeit the affinity for higher levels is not great. But yeah, that's probably his best spot. A1 sleeping, that's all he's got. Uh, he's annoying to play against, honestly, because he does give a heal and an increased defense. He's an okay support unit, but uh, again, I feel like there's much better ones out there. Uthea hits kind of hard, but no harder than a starter champ. Outside of that, I think she's pretty trash. Burgess, incredibly hard to kill, is capable of doing a bunch of solo type of strats, but um, only if you want to spend half an hour in there, and uh, that's kind of boring. <laughs> Marksman, trash champion, absolutely trash, been buffed a few times, still completely trash. Jingle Hunter, jingle all the way back to the trash can, no thanks. Uh, Battle Sage does bring some buffs which can't be removed, which is quite cool, so for Hydra that's quite a nice thing to have. But, um, and does bring a cleanse as well, I believe. Yeah, a cleanse as well on the same skill. Kind of need something else in the kit, though. I wouldn't build her out. I feel like there's much better options nowadays. Exemplar, only really viable in a dark face strat where you're trying to force a freeze on someone. For a void, epic, absolute trash bag. Uh, Andrasia, actually kind of good champion. She is a really good support base unit. Kind of like a mini net crit, but not as good. Um, but yeah, not bad in the arena. Not bad as general support. Uh, probably could be played at 50 to a decent level. Sacred Order then. Canon S. No thanks. Adriel. Trash bag. Hope. We hope she gets buffed again. Frostbringer. When will you bring the frost? Talia. Hits hard. That's it. Damn. Five absolute trash champions really. Not absolutely trash. Like Talia is actually not bad. But again, not much better than the starter champion for damage. And she's really only there for damage. So... I think these first five, all pretty bad. Juliana, slightly better now than a Kale for poisoning in Clan Boss. She does have, though, a turn to fill on her A1, which is quite hard if you want a speed tuner. Outside of that, she's actually kind of good nowadays. Tanguina, kind of underrated, decent epic. Does bring this 
uh, block debuffs on her A2. And she's got this ability to transfer debuffs from herself um, to a target. Also remove all debuffs from all other allies. So she's kind of like a really good support champion for something like Agreth the Never Spider or anywhere where you're taking a lot of debuffs. Aethar, decent against Dragon. Uh, he's basically, he's got a good poison ability here. Decent against Dragon. Decent in an unkillable team against Clan Boss. That's probably it. Relic Keeper, I'm not a big fan. He can one-shot people again and again and again. Um, but why not just pick up someone who does an AoE, does the same thing in one go. Uh, yeah, not a big fan. Missionary, your mission is to find a place in the game. Romero did get buffed alongside Juliana. I, th I still feel like he's a pretty weak source. He hits a bit harder nowadays. He's got an okay support kit, but not a good one. Lady Atessa, Lady Trash. Mordecai, really good champion. Great epic. Uh, brings the burns. Also does it on a placer burn, so you can place it through things like Poison Cloud against Hydra. Uh, really good for Spider, good for Sorath. So yeah, pretty much a good AoE burner. Bushy. The only thing I can say about Bushy is he's got this kind of revive ability. If you're facing Bushy in something like Faction Wars, he's the most annoying champion in the game. If you're using Bushy, he's kind of trash. You might be able to make use of him if you're doing something like Sand Devil lower levels. You just want him to pop back up and keep going. A bit like Torture Helm does the same thing. Outside of that, wouldn't use him. Phoenix. Oh, look at this fella. Look at the chest. You know someone's going to be good when he looks this good. When I look in the mirror, this is what I want to see every morning. Phoenix has got the hardest hitting A1 in the game, and it block revives. It's a great, great ability. Super underrated in Arena, by the way, Phoenix, because he can block revive this disgusting revive meta we've got going on right now. Really good champ. Also brings block buffs, which is good for stuff like Hydra and general content, like Faction War content. And he's got a good uh, A3 for bosses as well. So all in, really good champ. Deacon. Oh! A legendary in an epic skin. Leech on the A1. Decreased defense on the A2. Turn meter gain on a three turn cooldown, which gets an extra turn on the A3. The dude is insane. Multi use, multi value. Really, really cool. Mistress of Hymns. Mistress of Trash. Uh, she's actually got a revive, which is not bad for Faction Wars. Wouldn't use her outside of that. Wouldn't take her past a 50. Lodric, not a bad clan boss champion with a decreased attack. And an ally protect. It's only on one person though, which lets him down. It does bring some good shieldage. It's good enough shieldage to deal with the Scarab boss. It's on a two-turn cooldown, goes out for two turns. Make him your fastest champion in your team. He will shield your team against Scarab boss all day long. Um, Anchorite, really good buff extender champion with some healing going on. Used him in my epic only clan boss team where we smacked the clan boss for a lot of damage. Go and check that out if you want to. Uh, Kalinia. Or as we better know her, Candlestick Head. Pretty trashy, epic really. That's got, she's got an okay kit. Decrease attack. Strengthen here. Burn here. It's all okay. Very average epic. I wouldn't say she's a master of any content in the game. Cardinal, one of the best champions for kind of like a, a niche arena type of build. Basically, if you put her in stone skin, she's got a revive ability where she picks everyone up with turn meter to max. It means everyone who's dead is definitely going next. That way, they all come up. We've got three damage dealers, and they just go pop, pop, pop. Everybody's dead. Thanks for coming. Uh, quite a fun strat. Light Sworn, not bad against the new Sand Devil boss. Got a revive on death. Uh, pretty good against Clan boss as well. A little bit old school nowadays. Got an okay amount of damage. Very good base numbers, but uh, almost needs a cheeky passive to come in to lighten him up a bit. Inquisitor Shamal. Brilliant against Hydra, like top tier, especially against that Head of Torment. Head of Torment's there. He's just cycling turn meter gain with this passive. It will actually only all funnel into your leader. So he's really good for that. Put someone in the lead that you want to use their abilities again and again. It's absolutely disgusting. Also really features in like plat arena level meta right now to one shot some sort of tank. Pretty good as anti Taras. Because Taris is also fearing up your dudes as well. Godseeker, what a god this epic is. Really top tier. Um, really good in Sand Devil. I run a two-man team in Sand Devil with Godseeker. Makes it easy. Also good in Clan Boss. Good generally in the game. 
Okay, on to the Barbarians then. Aina. Aina no good, apart from in an unkillable clan bus team. Jotun with an extra N nowadays. I don't know where that came from. Very, very average to bad. Epic. Takara, she loves to read so many books to try and in, engage this champion. And when you do, you realize, what a waste. Ator, horrible to fight against. Horrible to have on your team. Useless. Amina, I actually feel like Amina's a bit of a bait champion unless you've got tons of stuns going on. I would not invest in her unless it was for something particularly... Unless you really needed her, honestly. I, I think she's a bit of a bait champion. Alika hits like an absolute horse. Um, packs a punch. She's also got this lockout ability on her A3, which is cool. Again, she loves a book. That's her problem. She absolutely loves to go reading. The Shada, not bad. Not great either. Pretty mid-tier, I would say. Wouldn't invest in her personally. Kalia, useless. Wouldn't invest in her. Maeve, no thanks. Baroff, not really that good. He's bang average. So Jamasa, um, get her through your referral account. She's quite hard. No, she's quite easy to get. The legendary version is hard. She's pretty decent. She's good to get early on. She's a decent support champion. Got revives going on. Um, really good paired with Cronum, who's way harder to get. You've got to get a whole bunch of referrals to level 50. Do you have friends that play raid? If you do, you're very lucky. Um, Woe Painted. Turns out she became, after a buff, one of the best healers in the game with this A2 Crazy Heal plus Cleanse. Really good ability. The Lockout skills is quite good for like picking an opponent in Arena or picking an opponent in Faction Wars and just saying, you can't use any of your main skills. So, turns out she's pretty decent nowadays. Hike to you get her at level 30. Do not underestimate this champion. You got her as a free login and you think, ah, oh, she's going to be trash. She's not trash. She's good against Fire Knight. She's good against, really, she's kind of good anywhere. She's good in the arena. She's kind of good anywhere. Speed lead, speed buffs, drop turn meter on the enemy, drop speed on the enemy. She's definitely not to be underestimated. Vala hits quite hard, does a bit of an AoE drop defense. She really needs this to be a 100% chance to land. It's a 50% chance to land, um, which makes her way worse, honestly. But she does hit quite hard. Arakin, god tier, epic champion, one of the best ally attack champions in the in the game, giving them two great buffs at the same time. Also brings a nice burn, poisons, drop defense, loads in his kit, really good, very versatile champ. Oscar all brings a nice uh, stun ability here. Also brings increased defense and resistance for your team. Decent as a control based champion. Harkon, really the only use case for a Harkon is if you're trying to spread buffs. Oh, sorry, spread debuffs. So if you've got someone who puts out single target HP burn like Candlestick Head, you spread that across the whole enemy team and all of a sudden, all of the spiderlings are burning for their, you know, to death. So that's what she's good at. Outside of that, I think she's pretty bad. So why? Kind of trashy. She hits quite hard. She's a good clan boss champion in terms of bringing you all of the debuffs that you need. And she hits hard. So I guess that one niche she's pretty good at. Outside of that, don't really feel like she's used at all. Sky Touch is a weird epic, but pretty good. So she brings a cleanse for your team. She brings block debuff. She brings revive on death, which can be very helpful for Sand Devil. Uh, and she brings a passive healing as well. But she does like to fear, uh, fear herself and damage herself and stuff. She's a bit more difficult to use. Really good in a go second arena team. So your team takes a load of damage. She cleanses them all. She gives them revive on death. Everyone's back in the game and everyone's loving life. Okay, Ogryn tribes. Grimskin, grim champion. Ugo, brilliant, brilliant epic. So great for Hydra, great for general content. Um, AoE drop defense and block buffs. It's just so useful in current arena setups, in faction wars, in Doom Tower waves, and especially against Hydra. Also a cleanse, a mini cleanse, and a heal here. And a revive if all of your team go down, which is quite cool. Brings Leech as well. Just loads in a kit that's very good. Claude, very, very underrated champion. Brings you increased speed and increased accuracy. That actually means you massively can reduce the stats you need for things like accuracy in Faction Wars or in Clan Boss or whatever. So if you run him with a buff extender, you can actually get a two-for-one speed team going on Clan Boss 
and he also brings shieldage and a decreased crit rate decreased crit rates a very underrated debuff pretty much in all pv uh, pve if you decrease crit rate by 30 percent, they will never ever crit you which is quite cool uh and a bit of a heal, heal going on as well very good champ siege hulk lives up to his name hits very hard the hulk brings a big damaging decreased defense aoe on a three turn very very useful good champ lawn the cutter very very stupid name he's the gardener from down the road um he's a very good fire knight champion so he's got triple hit he's got drop a uh, heal reduction and he's got turn me to drop as well so yeah fire knight kind of specialist i would say skull crusher great clan boss champion one of the only or the only epic with counter attack for your team that exists uh also not bad for fire knight bringing you that counter attack and a heal reduction as well shatterbones good turn me to control a champion able to lock down a lot of enemy champs uh, that's probably his best point also hits quite hard brunch pretty underrated as an epic has got a full cleanse ability got some bomb detonation stuff going on really cool if you run him in a bomb team but that cleanse can be really helpful against someone like agref seize uh, i think this dude's a login champ nowadays um i think he's pretty bad though <laughs> pretty bad old gruckus underrated champion i would say got a decreased speed and turn meter on the a2 aoe uh, heal reduction and he's got a triple hit again another one of these kind of like finite style champs galcut hits really hard he's a bomb champion he absolutely smacks if you build him high so bear that in mind he can smash his way through faction wars really easy or could be your arena nuke hits really hard cage breaker kind of needs a buff really just a pretty bad champ uh, a cold brawler still a very very good damage dealer for clan boss and uh, that's probably his only spot that i'd say is really that viable for but pumps out poison like you wouldn't believe also cool thing about this champ you do not need to book him grush another one of the login bonus kind of champions decent mid-tier champion does a lot of healing does a lot of damage and brings you a leech ability which means you can start to get out of everybody wearing life steal gear once you get past that kind of mid game, I think he just gets, you know, overpowered by better champions on the team, but he is decent. Man Eater, still the god of unkillable teams, brings you this unkillable buff. Need to book him out, but once you book him out, he will just create the best clan boss teams that exist. He's also just generally a really good champion, like Faction Wars, anywhere where you need to drop Term Eater, his A2 does that. Loads going on in his kit. Tower and Titan, pretty trash, needs a buff. Scrank! great champion aoe burns um yeah turn me to stuff going on this dude hits hard as well got weakened as well really good champ prundar if you need a slab of meat to block the path Trun uh, prundar's your man just a kind of provoker straight up tank eurodrim great poisoner healer able to solo some high level like dragon content ice golem content really good champ Okay, then lizards. So, Sharang. Sharang, useless. Shareg, actually kind of decent. Good for clan boss. Good against the griffin. Good against the eternal dragon. Basically, decrease attack A1 is always going to be nice. So, when other skills are locked out, he's still got that going on. Um, also, pretty damn good in faction wars just to help keep your team alive. He's got this nice ally protect and he's got a good continuous heal, a passive ability. Venomage, great epic champion, good in so many areas, awesome passive skill, which reduces your damage, does poisons, does decrease attack, does decrease defense, just generally really good epic. Basilisk hits kind of hard, but pretty trash, I would say. If you're trying to do the epic secret room, you might need his brute force power. Outside of that, I don't think he's very good. Aox, good support-based champion. I use Aox in my Iron Twins team basically extending the debuffs when when your team's taking hits good paired with geo um outside of that good in clan boss as well with healing poisons decrease attack whole bunch of stuff going on in the kits rude lord got a bit of control going on here aoe stunnage um and has got some protection for your team as well it's only for one person though i think he's kind of average to bad um but i guess in a niche situation might be okay z uh one of the doom tower epics miles away i wouldn't even consider this dude as in the game unless you've been playing for a long time 
and even when you get him kind of average to bad. Drake, pretty poor champ. Shizo, get him early. Not bad for like late game Hydra if you need someone as a head of mischief tank and someone who deals with head of decay. Outside of that, I think he's pretty much a trash bag. Wagon, pretty niche champion. Um, not many champions do this, but he does give like attack champions increase attack, defense champions increase defense. Means you can have as a multi buffer for you know different damage dealers on the same team. Uh, outside of that, though, I think he's kind of bad. Broadmoor, farmable, kind of fusible champion. Decent, not great, I would say. Brings you a revive, good for this faction, uh, for faction wars. Gives you like buffs like increased speed. It's actually kind of better than he was. He got buffed and he's much better than he was. Scathix, a bit underrated. Got this great A3 cleanse ability. Puts out block debuffs, gives you a shield. That's his main kind of like attraction. Good against aggro or anywhere where you're trying to just cleanse people up. Skinwalkers then. Taurus, really good paired with an uh, AoE Poison Exploder. Yeah, really good for that. Also pretty good paired with uh, Kemptum from this same faction. Yeah, if you're going to use him for something like Spider 10 hard, these two can, can duo it really well. Flesh Terror needs a buff. Uh, pretty bad nowadays. Scabbers, kind of like a clan boss only champion. I think there's better champions that are doing the same job out there, but he's not bad. Ripper. Rip yourself up, my friend. Absolute trash. Brain Beast. Merry Christmas for 2017 or whenever this game came out. Since then, since he got nerfed, he's been in the dirt. Snorting Thug. Buffed three times. Needs another couple. Still pretty, pretty useless. Yaga. Most fed epic in the game, and we know why. Ursine. Ice Crusher. Christ, this, this faction is weak. Weak champion, Ursine. The other one, Ironhide. Actually kind of good. Good for faction wars. Some um, turn me to control going on. Some decrease attackage. Only really faction war champion. I don't think he really gets outside of there. Maybe Ice Golem, I guess. Flores, good reviver for this faction. Wouldn't take him past level 50. Still Skull, still a good clan boss champion. Brings you increased defense, a cleanse, a heal, uh, and some poison. A little bit low on the poison activation. You really do need to book him out. And there's probably better options as the game develops, but not bad for early game clan boss. Fane, really good in unkillable teams. Does a lot of damage. A lot of damage with all her abilities. Has also got all of the debuffs you need for clan boss, but very squishy. 727 defense. If you're going to run it outside of an unkillable team, you're going to want to think, do things like defense ring, defense amulet, probably defense banner as well, and then find accuracy somewhere else because you need to keep her alive. Basha locks out enemies, got like this mini warlord ability, which is cool for the arena. Very good for faction wars. Akemtum, one of my favorite epics of the moment, does, th does things that epics should not do, honestly. It's got this triple hit hex ability, which extends hex, and it's got this debuff spread if hex is out there on an A1. Puts poisons out as well, so you can put poison out and just spread it around. Um, and then when those poisons go off, all sorts of hell was breaking loose able to solo content, able to do like Spider-10 hard with a couple of other champions. I've done videos on this. Really, really good. Epic champion. Great for Hydra. Good for Clan Boss as well. Okay. Skinwalkers. We're just done. Uh, Orcs. Orcs then. Ultimate Gaelic was the first epic in the game to get an AoE HP burn. It's not as good as the other ones we've already spoken about. Much rather use now Mordecai or Skrank. Uh, or Akoff that you get through Doom Tower. We'll come up to in a minute. Still kind of good though. Hits quite hard. Got some turn meter control as well. Good for faction wars. Duke, really good. Bit like um, Stagnite. AoE decrease attack and defense on a three turn. Got a single target provoked. That's good against the Magma Dragon. Um, generally good champion. Jord, decent reviver. Good for this faction, but just a support unit really. Maybe level 50 is fine. Tagore, good new epic champion. Brings himself increased defense on his A1, increased speed for your team and a heal, and shield for, for your team as well. Really good support champ. Maruka, another new champion here. Not sure if she's just a, a summonable champion. I, I get confused nowadays. But it's got quite a good kit. Got a single target cleanse. Got revive on death for your team, which again is good for Sand Devil and decreased speed as well. Not bad outside of Sand Devil. Probably wouldn't really use her a lot, honestly. I don't think her kit's that great. Torture Helm can solo stuff like Dragon 20. I've done a video on this. 
can also solo up to about stage 10 sand devil because of his passive skill whenever he dies he pops back up you need him quite fast and quite high health to do that zargala hard hitting aoe decrease defense champion really good through like the mid game in arena because she hits hard she drops defense she sets everyone else up and uh, she's also got this kind of a2 that if she kills someone then she's going to activate the a3 again so she, she can do a multiple hits if you build a high damage blood feather pretty trash really bone keeper trash shaman trash terror beast outside of having this reflect ability which is okay for fire knight i think pretty trash awful to fight against awful in your team brask is a pretty competent healer good for stuff like doom tower good for stuff like bomb or if you're just trying to stay alive uh good for something like iron twins if you're just trying to stay alive good healing cool thing about this dude is you've just got to build him with um high health and crits so irrelevant of anything else that's going on if he crits he will heal everybody for 10 percent of his health if he's in retaliation gear and he hits he will heal everybody every time he gets a turn of some sort for 10 percent so pretty cool um champ sandlash survivor buff extender really good champion for clan boss good for the arena as well with this passive basically when she takes it when your team take a knock she will ally protect them and block damage herself really good to just protect your team from taking a one shot so yellow gurna uh one of the new champions i think maybe through doom tower i forget now but honestly pretty pretty average champion hits quite hard but not much going on with her kit Trombo, I really like this new epic champion. So we've got an ally protect for your team. We love that skill. And we've got a AoE hit here. Remove a random buff from allies. So it can be used to do stuff like cleanse a stun from clan boss. Uh, just generally really good new champ. Seer, god tier wave clearer. The best in the game. Basically, the more buffs on your team, the more damage she will do. Really good. Two hack, pretty average really. Got some good turn meter stuff going on. Got a bit of a smack on his A2, but pretty bad. Tolf, the useless. Useless champion. Liberga, uh, again, a Doom Tower epic. Pretty decent, actually. High level damage. Lots of poison going on. Not bad in clan boss. Pretty good at setting up an Akemtum to do his work. Eight factions down. Seven to go. Well done if you're still with me. Demon Spawn then. Allure, great for Finite up until level 25. Really, between 20 and 25, she's one of the most utilized champions in the game because of her turn meter drop on her A1. You do need 100% crit. You do need accuracy to make it work. And she will do a ton of turn meter control against a single target. Also good against Dark Fae. Um, Excruciator can one-shot pretty much anyone in the game. And then she stands there and like, what else do you want? Other than that, she's kind of useless, really. Akoff, second champion you get from Doom Tower Normal. As an epic, really good burn champion for Spider. Buildrax is one of the only support champions that sets up Hex, but uh, doesn't really have anything else going on. Pretty trash. Scion trash. Erin S trash. Soul Drinker, kind of fun with Gaius, who I think is in this faction as well. No, he's not. He's a Night Rev. Um, Soul Drinker, basically, as he dies, puts bombs out. Wants someone else who's going to explode those bombs to get some use out of him. Gaius is really good for that. Someone like um, a War Mother, really good for that as well. Azana, good support champion, got ally protect, lots of AoEs, good for faction wars. Infernal Baroness, kind of similar, really. AoE decrease attack, good for faction wars, not really that useful outside of that. Tanix, one of the login champions, can use her AoE drop speed against Hydra, but otherwise, kind of useless. Achak, really good epic champion, got this freeze ability. Um, here also if you pair him with a burner as well then he gives your team healing and turn meter against spider him alongside a burner is pretty much job done really really good combo also brings strengthen as well hellgazer gaze somewhere else useless tarshan good champion actually brings a aoe weaken brings an increased turn meter and increased defense so if you've got like a nukage defensive team uh, he can be a good setup for that. Gorlos, good for this faction in terms of an AoE drop defense champion. Um, probably much better if you've got Stagnite or Duke the Pierce or something like that. Just a better version, really. But for this particular faction, for faction wars, he does a good job. 
Magnar, one of the best damage dealing HP based champions in the game. Jur is one of the reviver type champs. Fine at level 50, good for faction wars. Urikata, one of the champions that you get uh, if you pull shards. I was about to say from Doomtown, but it's just a normal champion. Um, I think much better options. She's, she's got a lot of poison going on. Much better options in the game for me. Uh, if you do use it, it's probably going to be a dragon team or it's going to be clan boss. Paidma, pretty old school now, but still got a really good ability to land decrease attack against clan boss if you pick her up. Um, she actually books to 100% if she crits, which is very unusual. Void as well, so you're not worried about affinity. Um, that's pretty much it. She does hit hard. She can be like an anti, um, anti Leorius or anti Skullcrown in the arena as well. Umbral is very, very good for faction wars. She absolutely annihilates this faction for faction wars. She's basically bringing a AOE provoke and puts unkillable on herself. So anyone coming at her will not kill her. She's also bringing AOE block buffs on a three turn, on a three turn cooldown. So that's really good for Hydra as well. Skimfrost, one of my new finds. Really like this champion nowadays. Um, lots of turn meter control. Lots of debuff control for your team as well. Basically transfers them onto himself and then pushes them back to your enemies. Brings decreased speed. Brings decreased turn meter. Love this champion for any boss where you can deal with their kind of turn meter like Spider, Finite, Ice Golem. Like loads of the bosses. Dark Fade. There's, there's tons of them. Okay, Undeads. Jaw grab, kind of like a mini arbiter, really good until mid game when it probably drops off a bit. Will still stay relevant for this faction for faction wars, so not a bad one to invest in. Seeker, you seek him here, you seek him there. Everyone wants one of these fellas. Um, he's in some of the best clan boss teams in the game. He's got this speed ability, which gets an extra turn, so he's basically on a two turn cooldown, which means he's pumping turn meter like you wouldn't believe. Really good, honestly, in tons of clan boss teams. You'll find you'll find Seeker popping up. Also really good in arena defense. It will spread. When he takes a hit as it's crit, as soon as he's hit, it will spread into his defense to the rest of your team. So if you put him at the front of your team, he takes a hit. Everyone else gets increased defense before they take their hit, which pretty much means they're going to stay alive. Katoom Counselor needs a buff. He's an ally attack champion. If you don't have one and you need more damage, ally attack's always better than not having it. Yeah, for something like Clan Boss. But ultimately, there's just much better versions out there now than this fella. Dark Aethel, big AoE kind of champion, but the damage is not enough to make her worthwhile. So pretty much a scrub champ. Dark Elhain does a lot of damage. Very good as an anti-frost champion. Someone puts a freeze on her. She just explodes with the A2. Very good at setting up a... Dark Fae counter. Very good against Tormen. Very good against Ice Golem. Husk rose to fame since Hydra came out. Loads of damage on the A2. AoE enemy max HP smack. Also if Hydra's got a provoke as well. So can actually be your provoke champion to deal with the head of decay. Karam poison exploder but only single target. Doesn't really ever get used because there's just not enough use case for this fella. Lich pretty bad. Hexia can one-shot anyone in the game, but other than that, I don't know what you're going to do with her. Is used in some kind of niche arena stuff, but not really used a lot. Cold Sinner, Trash, Corpse Collector, very early game, kind of clan boss champion really with some Poison and Leech. Also in Mage, uh, really good epic, good support unit, lots of buffs, cleanse uh, and decreased speed. Really an all-rounder, not a master of any content, but an all-rounder. Pairs really well with Seer to rip off a load of buffs. Um, and it's good in the arena as well as like a go second team. Zenitar, got some AoE sleepage going on, but pretty bad. Bogoth, really, really good tank. One of the best healer stroke tank champions in the game. So brings a um, ability to provoke. Really solid against Bommel. Anywhere where you're taking big damage, this fella can heal your team whilst you're taking the damage. Balthos. Not much going on really. Does have a 100% chance to provoke. So good control. Doesn't really hit very hard. So more about control. Bring other hitters into your team. I guess he does have this decreased crit rate. Again, very unusual skill to have. So if you're putting that on the whole enemy wave um, in PvE content, you're not going to be taking crits. Anax, very hard hitting champion. All single target though. He's basically a clan boss specialist with um, and 
mainly used in unkillable teams, but very hard hitting. Good champ. Right, on to Dark Elves then. We've got Captain Tamila, kind of poor, like an okay support champion, but really needs a bit more in a kit. Caden, good reviver, hits pretty hard, defensive based champion. Dark Kale, one of the champions you get from Doom Tower, really, really good. This is an epic that's worth pushing for because he does so much. He's got the ability to activate burns and poisons on his A1, puts out poisons on the A2. For a lot of end game content, that's exactly what you need to speed up your damage flow. So, Really good in clan boss, really good generally. Uh, Gwyneth, another Doom Tower champion here, hits hard. Otherwise, kind of, she's so far away, not many people are going to have her, but yeah, an okay champion, I would say. Spider, pretty underrated, does bring a lot of debuffs, decreased at uh, attack, decreased defense, and weaken. Particularly good against Spider. This is on too long a cooldown, really, for it to be used consistently in like wave based content. So it needs to be like a one round encounter. Uh, quite squishy though so you need to be aware of that and abysmal speed so yeah quite hard to rotate around those skills quite quickly so dirandil i tell you what he's, he's got very low base hp it's quite hard to keep alive his kit's all about just straight doing damage if they could just buff his a1 so that this chance increases to a hundred percent chance to place a freeze then we might have someone for hard um finite yeah that's what we need we need multi-hitters that do that do freezes and they're guaranteed we just don't have them right now Hits hard, this guy's A2 and A3 both hit very hard, but that's straight up all he's got going for him. Rian, another Doom Tower champion, actually pretty good. Uh, able to remove all of the buffs from an enemy or the whole enemy team and put Weaken out there in their place. Um, with a buff meta kind of being everywhere in the arena, could be pretty useful for that. Breast, pretty trash. Crack off very late into the Doom Tower world and kind of bad. Luria. Kind of like a mid-tier champion. Does does a lot of debuffs, honestly. Loads of debuffs. They're all a bit random. Uh, this is quite good if you're trying to freeze the bombs against Bommel. Um, at least you've got an option to, to do it. But it's only a 75% chance for it to happen. Doesn't really hit hard enough to get this block revive going. So, okay champion. Pretty niche -y. Crimson Helm. Does have the revive on death ability. Again, good for Sand Devil in certain teams. Uh, also got uh, four hitter provoke and then blocks damage coming into you. Definitely annoying to face, um, but not that great to use, honestly. Warden, pretty trash. Delva, she got buffed. She hits harder. Still pretty trash. Bang Cleric, pretty trash. Okay in faction wars if you want to revive, but not really a very good one. Uh, Visionary, pretty decent. So it's got some turn meter stuff going on. Increased crit rate, increased crit damage as well and decreases the enemy's crit rate so lots going on with just controlling crit and some speed lua kind of an upgraded version of loria i guess just hard hitter multi-hitter and has got this kind of um turn meter drop as well good against some bosses like finite good in wave content as well Silar, great turn meter control champion if you're trying to do like hard level doom tower waves and you're just struggling Silar can come in and just rotate that decreased turn meter, decreased speed ability, and give you way more time to get your hits away. Throwing her a stun set as well. She's got a couple of AoEs, and she will just be controlling for you for days. Madame Sari, a bit like Rianne, the Conjurer here, um, able to remove all of the enemy's buffs and replace them with two nasty debuffs. That's her main part of a, a kit. Also got some self-shielding and some fears and stuff going on. Really, really good epic. Mainly for the arena, though. Um, Night Revs, Crypt Witch, Trash, Pitiless One, Trash, Necro Hunter got a buff, does a bit more damage, but still kind of trash. Miscreating Monster is really good for early into mid game Spider, sets up a team, gives you a big fat shield here. Does have ally protection as well, um, so if you're struggling for an ally protector for Clan Boss, can do it, but doesn't bring anything else for Clan Boss, so he's not great for that. Um, better, better than not having one, honestly. Barsalus, absolute dirtbag of a champion and would never build him out. Aishma, half decent champion, got some poisons and some AoE weaken going on. But again, not brilliant. Tenacia does a lot of damage. Um, also got some healing going on. Good for wave based content, good for the arena. Doom Priest is kind of like a jack of all trades, will always be useful for your account. Able to just rotate through this passive. That's all she's got. It's just this passive. 
Forget she has skills. All she's got is this passive. Get her fast. Get her quite tanky. She just rotates through and says, just going to cleanse off your debuffs. Cleanse off your debuffs. Everyone stays alive. She does a bit of a heal as well. Just gen generally good champ. Sepulchre, pretty much a clan boss specialist. Also not bad for faction wars as well. Brings you increased defense and block debuffs. That's on a two turn, so you're able to cycle it pretty well. And brings you a decreased attack A1. Rector, great healer, good reviver, good for this faction. Uh, Talicia, good damage dealer, AoE drop defense, AoE hex. Uh, really good for Hydra, really good for this faction, for faction wars. Lady Eresh, pretty trash. Deathless, trash. Kytis, very niche, but incredibly high damage if you activate him. So he's got this ability here, bleeding wounds. So it only activates when he loses half his health. You kind of need him in something like Swift Parry Deer and hope that it procs, or you need him to go with a Cardiel that we spoke about, or Cardinal, sorry, that we spoke about earlier. When she revives him, she doesn't revive him with full health. He comes back and just pops the enemy with an absolute smack. It's a little bit old school, still effective if you get it to work, but I guess there's some, some barriers to it working. But if, if he's active, it's one of the hardest hits in the game. Burgoth, pretty trash. Pestilus, uh, not a bad champion, I guess. Gives you increased accuracy. Gives you uh, some nice healing and a burn out there and some leech. Pretty average mid-tier type of support champ. So Franox, terrible champion. Faceless, shows your face. Uh, actually hits really hard to one-shot pretty much anyone in the game uh, with his ability, which ignores defense. Um, but after that, he's just kind of there, there with his pants down, wondering what to do next. Skull Crown, big AoE hitter, good for wave-based content, good for the arena. Golden Reaper, speed champion, pretty decent, brings a decreased attack as well, and an ability to decrease cooldowns of random skills on your on your uh, team. Pretty decent. Uh, Whisper, hard damage dealer, all single target stuff. Can cycle extra turns and get a lot of damage going. Uh, I know a lot of people, like Snub Raids particularly loves this champion for like Hydra or boss killing. Uh, I've seen her used as well in like uh, low level, like level seven sand devil for just like farming up your um, your juice as quick as you can. Right, onto the dwarves then. So Grizzled Yarl, good epic champion, brings a block debuffs, uh, also brings a decrease attack. Not bad for clan boss, especially good for faction wars here. Cornelia, um, I used to really dislike this champion. Still looks freaky as hell, but I've been converted. I do run her on the free to play. She is extremely good at soloing Doom Tower content. I will say though, she solos it very slowly. So don't feel like, oh, I'm going to build her out and get myself a couple of two-minute teams. No. You're going to have some lunch. Perhaps you're going for a walk around the park. When you come back, she's finished it. But she does finish it. She can solo Bommel. She can solo just about... Go and check out YST. She can solo just about every Doomtower boss out there. Feel ya. Um, she does feel ya with this A2 and the A3. She hits pretty hard. And she can pretty much just cycle turns very quick because of this A3 ability and she can deplete turn meter on her A2. She's very good for turn meter control in Spider especially. Rear guard, Sergeant, what does she guard? Uh, she is an ally protector, very good in clan boss. She has got AoE decreased attack as well, decreased defense. Good in faction was good in clan boss I would say as her main two roles. Geo is one of the kings of this game. Geo can do stuff that no one else can do. Straight up. Yeah, he's got this burn ability on his A3. As soon as he's out there, every time anyone in your team takes a hit, it's like a mini Warmaster hit. It's going on that enemy. It's because of this passive. It's pretty gross. Great for Hydra. Great for Iron Twins. Um, it's not even bad for Sand Devil in some comps. Brilliant for Clan Boss. Agref, Bommel, like the list goes on. He's an obscene champion. Uh, Rockbreaker, pretty good for the final stage in Faction Wars here. He's got quite a nice passive where he reduces his damage. Quite hard to kill, but probably a bit dated nowadays as a champ. Melda, good revive, epic, brings a lot of shieldage as well. Good against Scarab boss. Podboard does bring an AoE decrease of defense. It's on a four turn, which is not the best. Um, so good for this faction, but not really great versus that group of champions that do it across the game. 
Morag, I was a recent convert to Morag. She was in my all epic clan boss team, which did a butt ton of damage. Um, she's pretty decent in the arena. She's not bad in clan boss. She doesn't really bring anything other than raw power and damage uh, and this kind of ally attack. She's still not as good as someone like Farakin for utility, but she does bring a strengthen on a three turn cooldown for your whole team, which is extremely rare to get. So if you pair her with a buff extender and you've got strengthen up the whole time, it's just straight up 25% less damage. So yeah, Morag, not bad actually. Runekeeper, good support unit. We've got turn meter going on. We've got um, cleanse and healing going on. Really good in clan boss, really good generally. Birdow, pretty much trash. Gala, I don't love Gala. I have seen some people use her in plat arena um, because of the amount of shieldage that's out there because of her ability to ignore defense and single target stuff is kind of in in plat doesn't mean that that translates to the average player honestly i don't think most people would get much use out of her rugnor hits hard decent in clan boss tries to kill himself unless you turn off his a2 ability so i suggest that you do um but if you do turn it off he's actually very good for clan boss the mytha queen of the unkillable comps only needs an heiress who's a farmable rare to get unkillable going. She's got very glittery, shiny um, sequins on her stuff because she's the queen. Basically, she's all about her unkillable block damage ability here. Really good against clan boss. It's also pretty damn good against the iron twins. Uh, good against kind of anything really. Got a buff extension as well. Really good champ. Shadowkins then. Taragi fantastic champion i really want this champ on my free to play please please send him to me please uh Taragi is one of my favorite ally protect champions in the game including all the legendaries gives you ally protection shield gives you poisons when when you're hit gives you decrease attack pretty much a clan boss specialist i would say atatsu another good clan boss champ giving you leech uh decrease attack increased defense i guess he's probably good outside of clan boss as well just in general as a a kind of support unit with some good skills. Chani, pretty trashy. Um, Nogor, Nogoro, Nogoro. Um, I've, I've already spent too long talking about him, just trying to say his name. Umitodi can pump out a, a pretty serious amount of damage, but quite niche to use, I would say. Tamo um, actually brings a nice decrease attack, does bring this kind of counter attack and turn me to fill ability. Not bad, but kind of like mid-tier, really. It's actually particularly good for this faction for Faction Wars. She's got this kind of passive ability to revive one of your fallen foes. Does bring some turn meter as well. Um, also brings that decreased crit rate and leech, which is nice against a boss on a two-turn. So yeah, not a bad champ. Penchi, decent champion. Great for Fire Knight. Great for Clan Boss. Geary, really good for Bommel. Again, a bit similar to Annabel we spoke about earlier. Got a passive where... When somebody dies, he heals. Also brings a stun on an AoE, which is good for waves. Bonichi, another ally protector. Much harder to use because when she puts out her ally protection, she gets this turn meter fill. And that's much harder to speed tune. But is a really good champion. If, it, if there was ways to speed tune her easier, then she would be in a lot more teams. Wuji hits very hard. Not bad against Hydra, but got such a insanely low hp that she's incredibly hard to keep alive surin here um aoe decreased defense on a three turn which is good brings weaken as well generally good for wave based content chinuru bit of a bait champion does do a lot of damage with this a3 but you have to ascend her to unlock it she needs to be booked to get that damage away um and she doesn't bring a lot else really gory pretty much one of two champions at the moment which answer finite hard from stage one to five but then drop off again straight after that so that's the only use case i found for this guy outside of that it's pretty bad maybe faction war waves for this kind of multi-chance to freeze enemies shurajin good clan boss champion decrease attack here and some shieldage going on here outside of that not much going on and there's better versions for the same job in clan boss a lot of them king agashi not much going on here pretty bad Mazamamoto, similar really, got an AoE decrease attack, does have a turn meter feel, but it's quite a small one. So it's not bad for a defensive based kind of nuka or 
or turn me to booster, but I've seen better ones out there. Aboru, very good against Hydra, able to do an AoE decrease at defense, also able to be a, a head of mischief tank because she's got self buffs. Gembo, really hard hitting champion, very good for the arena, able to just ignore that silly old um, <laughs> unkillable ability. So pretty cool for that. Tyre hits pretty hard, got some poisons and stuff going on, but a bit one dimensional as a champ. Okay, onto the last faction. Well done if you're still with me. Drop me a subscribe if you're still there. You know you need to. Cormac, pretty trash. So Kellen the Shrike, really high damage on this AoE on the A3. And um, got some good turn meter control going on the A2. Duodan is one of the few champions in the game at the moment with Taunt. The only real use I'm finding for Taunt at the moment is to guarantee a stun hit is going in one place on the clan boss. Otherwise, you know, so if there's an AoE hit, it's just going wherever they want. So it's just good against single target hitters. But um, yeah, not really enough in his kit to make him relevant anywhere for me. Dithy, really good champion at just cycling turns. Got this AoE decreased defense, cycles extra turns all over the place. Kind of fun, good for this faction, for faction wars. Pretty high damage as well. Orn, able to solo content, got loads of poisoning going on. Um, really, really good epic champion. Solo things like dragon, high levels, 25, whatever. And um, yeah, pretty good for clan boss as well. Ruella, got a good turn meter feel going on on the A3. Uh, also with a nice buff. Lots of debuffs on the A2. Pretty much a boss killer. Fire Knight, she's really good. Any boss where you want to get that decreased speed and decreased defense out there, she's very good. Ender, Ender, my son. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. What, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I don't even know this champion. I'll be honest. I don't know. Increases champion speed by two for each enemy under leech. Terrible. I don't even know. Seems pretty average. Ender Moonbeam. Looks cool. Isn't really. Not much going on in the kit. Got an AoE leech. That's about as good as you're going to get. And then Nia, last one in the list. Very, very good epic champion. Got a very unique kit, but quite hard to make it work. So she brings strength and brings ally protect, which we like for clan boss. Um, but in general content, this A2 ability will just keep resetting the cooldown of abilities of your leader, unless she needs to heal someone else. So you can direct it to a certain extent. She does bring a, a decreased speed on an AoE, which is good for Hydra. And she spreads her own heal across your team. Again, good for Hydra. But um, the, the A2, one of the best epic skills in the game. But it's not always that easy to direct. So there you go, guys. All of the epics done. I don't know how many that was. Maybe 700 or something. Um, I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.